All right, Miss Batavia, why are plants bad cheerleaders? Because they're green with envy? No, because they're only rooting for themselves. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to take a trip into the past, and we're going to ask you to do something that we never want to do. We want to relive the past right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. All right, everybody. Before we get started, we want to keep this chewing gum operation going, so please check us out on Patreon to get extra episodes every month and to get entered into our drawing to have a one-on-one conversation about whatever you would like with Batavia and myself. Or you can get t-shirts and all that other fun swag down below at teespring.com slash backyard gardens, or you can subscribe to us on YouTube and even check out our Amazon page. All the links are below and we would humbly appreciate it if you would check them out because we don't want to give you crappy advertisements that don't affect you at all. Okay. So my joke was particularly bad and I, I liked it. I thought that was the, I thought I'm thinking you're trying to top the last bad joke. That's, I mean, that's the direction it seems like these are going in. If if I ever found the perfect bad joke, I would just never stop telling. I just tell it over and over and <laughs> over. But I haven't found that yet, so I have a bunch of them to go through. So we'll see. Do you, uh, in your life, do you relive the past very often? For a pe- or you try and leave it behind? No, for a period of time, I relive it, relive it, relive it, and then um, I put it behind me. So I may relive something for weeks or even months. Yeah, I know you'd be bringing up some old shit, so there's that. Well, I mean, I think this is part of life. But, uh, <laughs> like, next year, this time, something that I'm struggling with or that I'm thinking back on, um, and most times the negative stuff, then it'll be out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. It's funny how time heals all wounds, isn't it? Yeah. Especially in the garden, because every year, it doesn't matter if I've had a good or a bad year, I always look at it in the beginning of spring and be like you know what yes last year was awesome doesn't even matter for the first time this year as i think about kind of the brand new beginning i just got tired like i was thinking about this i was out in the yard um i don't know earlier in the week and i was just like i think it was surrounding me telling some people well no i'll be pulling all of this up so it was less about having to do it all but more about like the end of season cleanup but you already know this I know this everything. My, this is my annual. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. It's, you know, this is the part of year where we go into reflection. Mm-hmm. You know, we start to wind the gardens down and we're reflecting. And this is for the regular listeners the f- conclusion. Is it the conclusion? No, it's not. Never mind. I'm just joking. This is a continuation of our uh you should get you can get more out of your garden series so um you know as we go through all of these different topics that batavia and i have magically come up with we've found new ways to add to the garden without expanding wouldn't you say Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so and i think I think it's safe to say that a lot of gardeners by nature are very experimental. I mean, hell, you've got to be experimental to start draw- growing your own food, right? Mm-hmm. So I think this is where all that experimental will come in and kind of help you to advance in the future. And we're going to be talking about reliving the past, but I think... It would be very helpful if we talked about how we are going to relive the past as well. What do you think? That makes me nervous. I didn't know that's what we were going to talk about, but okay. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it. I think it'll help. Um, you know, because when we're recording this, it's happy fall. It is the first day of fall when we're recording this, so. Um, it's a good time for me to look into my garden and say like, Hey, you know, what worked, what didn't, but what was, you know, going to help me meet this next goal that I have mm-hmm. for the upcoming year. If this is even a goal of mine, I don't know yet. Yeah. I'm right on the cusp of, uh, a lot of summer plants have either been pulled out or are really done and need to be pulled out. 
And then I'm at the beginning of kind of fall things, either taking off or not. And so this, I, I didn't want to do this now, right? I, I didn't want to, I was holding on to winter to reflect, but you and I both know that this is a better time to do it. Yeah. Right. You know, things are truly fresh. I was just telling young Ben before we started recording, I was looking back at a video in from November of last year and I had forgotten some of the things that I talked about in that video that I was looking at. I'm just like, Oh, I'm a, I'm living in an imaginary world. That's not how this, <laughs> you know, I shouldn't expect what I'm expecting right here today. Like that, that's not going to happen. Um, and so to that point, it's, you know, there's a lot of hopefulness I think that sometimes gets in the way of what reality oftentimes is for us in the garden. Yeah. And I think, you know, the reflection period is a lot like the stages of grief. There's multiple stages of it. And this is the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then as we get into the winter, there'll probably be a little bit more because, you know, the dark days of winter have set in unless you live in, you know, a zone where you can grow all year round. And when I say grow all year round, I'm I'm I am referring to basically grow whatever you want mm-hmm. all year round. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I grow year round, but there's a big limit on what I can grow. So it doesn't really count for me. Yeah, actually, speaking of in a recent episode, you discussed turnips and you, you described it as, you know, you're a big turnip grower. And I was thinking about it and saying, um, gosh, you know, I, I dropped some turnip seeds like yesterday. And the funny thing is, in this video I'm talking about from November, I looked back and it was like, I'm going to say probably right around Thanksgiving, uh, so closer to the end of November. And I was talking about how I hoped I was getting turnip bottoms. I hoped that they would grow. And it was just, you know, the leafy tops. And I don't I didn't look any further back to see when I planted those seeds. But I know I didn't. I know I planted them earlier than I did this year, which goes back to the whole, you know, the reflection part. Had I reflected even a month ago. I would have been in a better place going into my fall garden, right? Just looking at one particular yeah. season. Uh, but this isn't an oh, woe is me. This is more of, this is a, a real time example of how this reflection is important because now you can start focusing on what reality is or was and likely will be in the future. Um, and the end goal would be using that information to help you get more out of your garden. As you start to plan yeah, for whatever's next for it. I've already um, st- rough started um, planning my next garden based on what my garden's doing now and how it's reacted to certain things. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to kind of look forward into next spring mm-hmm. and think about the planting dates, the, mm-hmm. you know, um, not necessarily the spacing, but um, what plants are going to go where. And that's going to help me moving forward because part of reliving the past is and in this manner where we're talking about getting more out of your garden, it's mostly thinking along the lines of like what in the past has been successful, Mm -hmm. what in the past has produced a lot, what's, you know, what you've enjoyed, what areas of, Mm -hmm. yeah, what you've enjoyed, what areas of your garden are more productive than others because, uh, in your garden, is there like a, a section or a bed or something like that that's generally more productive than the others? Yes. See, so I, I would imagine for most people there's that, and it could be some kind of outside influence like extra shade, um, you know, I don't know, maybe extra shade. I can't think of it. Can you think of anything else? No, I mean, I think that depending on um, how your garden is situated, it could be uh, better drainage, you know, or it could be a spot where it holds on to moisture just right. The uh, the best, there are two spaces, and I'm just going to split it up. In the front yard garden, it's probably the very first large bed. So, you know, as the sun rises, this bed gets the majority of the sun. Interestingly, it's not the very first bed in my garden, because I continue to struggle with that one. It's that first large like 10 by like three and a half feet bed in the backyard oddly enough it's not the cage baby I know I would have expected that but it is probably the second to last bed it's one of those that you've seen my garden where it's right along the fence line the wood fence yeah. And so it's like the corner bed that's closest to the garage it's kind of tucked in right so and 
you, you hit the nail on the head when you said like that probably is one of the shadier spots in my garden. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think a combination of what I've planted there and its positioning, it gets enough sun for vegetables to do well, but it doesn't burn anything up, you know. See, and that's that's really important because a lot of people, myself included, would think like, oh, this is a shady part of my garden. It's useless at certain times of year. But that's not really the case because, I mean, we're coming. When is this episode air? Do you know? No, I never know. Yeah, you never know. I always ask you. So, um, well, Leonard's not looking it up, so we'll just have to deal with it. But roughly... We're definitely in October. Yeah, so we're in October. I don't know. I could be off. Maybe, yeah, maybe. (laughs) Sort of, kind of. But you're you're probably getting ready or have already had your first frost. So you're just coming out of the period or you're into the period of like those last days of summer where it's hot. Mm Mm-hmm. And you know that you you don't get enough sun for something like tomatoes, you know, where they just really love the sun. They need all the sun they can get. But it could be cool enough there to get your lettuce going. They don't need as much sun. So, you know, you can have these little sections in your garden that are good for it. And in my garden, so um, two things. One, my second crop of tomatoes now has green tomatoes on it. Oh, that's So, so cool. We uh, we have about another month of really decent warm weather before we lose that. So hopefully we'll start to get some regular tomatoes. And if not, I'm going to eat the hell out of some fried green tomatoes. But two, there's a spot in my wild garden, which I did a video where I was fixing the bad soil from this year. And I replanted it. I haven't done a garden tour for it yet, or I may have by the time this airs. But there's this one section of my garden that historically I've thought like there's something going on here where it doesn't get enough light. And I planted two of the same things um, three feet from each other. And the one in the front's bigger and the one in the back is smaller. Mm-hmm, so I'm mm-hmm. starting to get a grip on that. And, you know, and that's kind of a shout out to last week's episode when we were talking about expanding and how it can be a headache because you don't really you, you, you have to learn this new space. Yeah. You know, you've got to pick up on what this new space is going to do. And so for me, it works out pretty well because I'm starting to get a grip on that now. And as I improve the soil more and more and I can eliminate that as an issue, hopefully this year I can eliminate that. Then I'll know like, hey, this is definitely a darker part of my garden so I can get lettuce in there earlier Mm -hmm. or I can get it in there later. And, you know, in the summertime and have some greens or something going there. So it's a good thing to kind of remember and go down. And this is, I mean, look, everybody's got a pocket, a phone in their pocket. So it's like perfect. Take pictures constantly. Um, I know, Batavia, you use your social media basically as a record of your garden. Yeah. I mean, it does, it's not the complete record, but there, you know, I generally post things that are notable to me. Right. You know, so it's not like everything I take a picture of. So it's easy for me to kind of loosely keep, keep it in my head to say, I remember sharing this. And in yeah. turn, I was talking to someone online about cabbage worms. And that's the video that I'm saying in November I could go back to. So I was trying to think of where do I have a quick reference to a, like what a cabbage worm looks like and kind of all of that stuff. Right. And so I was able to go back to that video, grab the um, the particular timestamp. You know, and say, all right, this is it. You know, so it's helpful for me, but it's also the reminder of I had cabbage worms on November 20 something still on my plants. You yeah. know, so those kind of small little notes, um, it's a lot to keep track of. And the reality is, and I don't know if this is like the alley oop, um, like I, okay, let's pause for a moment. Um, I used to run. My method was run walk. So I used to be like a weekend warrior. I used to do like um, like 5Ks, half marathons, marathons. And I've shared this story with you before, young Ben. And the first, very first marathon that I did, I trained to the letter, you know, of the schedule. And I was uber nervous, uber anxious. I felt like if I didn't follow every exact, you know, run day that I wouldn't complete the marathon. And then I completed it. And then the next one, I followed the training schedule. By the time I got to the third or fourth one, I was kind of like, ah, you know, I can skip a day here. And I realized that I have what it takes to get to the end. It may not be pretty, right? And so when I think about gardening, there's a lot that 
when I'm resistant to writing something down, keeping a notebook, a lot of it's because I have it in my head, right? It's still keeping it casual. It's still allowing me to, you know, do what I want to do when I want to do it, you know? And it's the reverse of it for the marathon. Like I have to go back to being a bit more rigid in my planning, Right. Mm -hmm. Because I have too many things going on now and I'm doing things that I've already learned the lesson for because I forgot the lesson. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, and it's you know, if you want to use that analogy, I think it's a great one because when you're training for something, you know, I've done I did some running and some triathlons and stuff like that. And even with my surfing, you build a base fitness and mm-hmm. you can, you know, as you get into those later ones, and that's what allows you to skip those days and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And for me, if you equate that to gardening, it's the same thing. You're building your base knowledge mm-hmm. and you've got to know the rules before you can break the rules. Yep. I mean, you know, that's the old saying from some genius. So, um, you know, a lot of times, especially it's, you know, when you get into like filmmaking and photos and stuff like that, it's like... People, you know, they want to cut the corners right away, but at first it's like you need to know what to do and then you can start to break those rules and then you can, um, that's not appropriate by the way. It's not. (laughs) Poor Batavia. Is it hot in your office? Yeah. It's like the, it's the coolest day. I can't, it's like 50, 56, 57 degrees outside, but you know how, you know, at this time of year, heat is still trapped in the house. I'm sitting in the uh, window where the sun is shining and it's far too hot. I've already taken off one layer of clothing and I'm, I may not be done yet, but let's see if we can get through this. (laughs) You're running out of layers. Like this is my grandfather. Like it's not that hot. Just stay still. So I'm trying not to move. (laughs) Yeah. Don't move. Whatever you do. But, um, you know, so it, it's it's the same thing like each year. And that's where the, you know, reliving the past comes in is you're building on that knowledge so you can come back and it gets easier and easier over time. Mm-hmm. I think for um, for me, I'm going to look back season by season because it's putting it in smaller bites for myself. Yeah. Um, and I can make quick notes around fall. Because, you know, we're in it and there's nothing yeah. I want to do now, really kind of going into fall. My notes are going to be about what I should do next year and it, way in advance of fall. Um, and because I'm so far away from it, you know, there there isn't this whole anxiousness of like, you got to get started. You got to get started. Like, you know, I'm probably eight months out from whatever I write down as I've looked back. This is my plan as an example um, starting my fall starts, like at this point, I'm thinking it looks more like June, right? You know, and that's probably at the later bit for me. Um, I had a lot of trouble with, um, seeds not germinating combined with what germinated, um, roly polies ate. Yeah. So I had a lot better luck with seedlings that I started that had some, um, you know, maturity to them because they can survive, you know, those roly polies. So that's a great example of I'm almost certain I learned that lesson last year. Don't you know it's not a a roly poly, it's a pill bug? Yeah. The the pill bugs weren't as bad. Uh, Strip this away year's, your childhood completely on that one. Yeah, well, it's fine. The pill bugs weren't as bad last year as they were this year. I have one bed that's really, really, really rolling in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were clever. Oh, you I thought you were it. clever. I saw I it on your it face. I down just to make sure you caught that I was clever. <laughs> yeah, I've got, um, you know, I was out there the other day. And I, I brushed it aside, the, the dirt, and there was, I mean, 50, 60 roly polies out there. I'm like, great, you know? So it's like, I've got to figure out something to do about that. I've heard of people putting orange peels out mm-hmm. and, um, you know, just attracting them and getting rid of them. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I, I think I need to do something because they have done a number on me as well. Yeah. But, um, you know, looking back into your garden over the years, and I mean, if we just want to, since you want to break it down by season, let's just focus on fall since that's the season we're in. <clears throat> what, f- for getting more out of your garden, like for you, what's kind of made that 
fit. You know what I mean? Like, what would you relive from the past? Or what are you reliving? Um, so I reusing. I would have I've had some great luck with lettuce. And by the time we get to fall, I've had few. I mean, not many traditional lettuces throughout the summer. Right. Because it's not really growing so much in my garden. So I would have started lettuce much earlier indoors and transplanted those out. Um, that's yeah. and I know, you know, some people can care less about lettuce, but it's an important part of my garden. Um, so I definitely would have done that. Um, I. And this is looking back only to this year, this next bit, and I'll turn it back over to you. Um, I would have just been dropping seeds, like quite literally dropping seeds, you know, recognizing that a lot isn't taking. So what's the harm in if it doesn't? You know, um, as I came into fall, I didn't really have my fall garden design in mind. So it created a lot of pause about what I was going to plant where, you know. And so I forgot about I said this in a recent episode, but I forgot about um, you're just not dropping a seed today. And seven days later, there's, you know, a very, very great chance that it's going to germinate. It's not, you know, we're in the middle of summer, you know, so yeah. the odds aren't always in your favor. Um, so I would have definitely started earlier, but then also recognize that some things just don't like to germinate in that heat, which goes back to the whole starting things indoors and having transplants. Yeah, you know, for me, <clears throat> um, as you know, I'm recently getting over a bout of the COVID and during that time frame, I just, I just couldn't take care of anything. So my fall garden I have everything on timers and, you know, for like my basic watering, but in between those waterings, everything dried out and my seedlings did not, my seeds did not do well Mm -hmm. at all, like almost 0%. So, um, today it's 94 degrees. Tomorrow it's going to be 78 degrees. So we're going to get into this cooler period. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to have a couple of days where it's nice and cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try and take advantage of that and try one more time to get something to germinate mm-hmm. <clears throat> during that print. Because, you know, now I'm getting a little bit better. I can get out and, you know, in the middle of the day or something on the off days of watering and just get them damp again. And hopefully I can get some easy stuff going. You know, I've got to do my second planting of radishes and turnips mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But um, that's, you know, it's every year it's the same thing with direct sowing in my garden. It's like constant, like keep it moist, keep it moist, Mm -hmm. keep it moist. And you don't do it and you just you you fail. And it's like, all right, I've got to kind of overcome that. And so it's like I need hopefully this year will kind of stick out in my head and I'll be like, okay, because, you know, at this point we're running low on time. I mean, yeah, I can get some lettuce in the ground. I've got about five to six weeks before we start getting a frost and even then we'll get like a frost maybe and then we'll bounce back up so i can get i can definitely i still have time but i'm running out of time very fast to get things established so they can take that cold because you know we've said this many times on here these plants can take the cold but they can't take them when they're young seedlings so that's always been kind of an issue for me and you know even though I'm, I'm reliving the past, but I'm really going to say, you know what, I'm going to relive the past from the past couple of weeks mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's okay. But, you know, even moving forward, like, you know, I planted my radishes early. They're doing good. My turnips. So doing a second planting of that will help. And as it gets cooler, as we all know, they will bounce back harder mm-hmm, and faster mm-hmm. and they will start to produce more and they will, you know, plumping up and stuff like that. So, you know, knowing that part in itself, and I think for everybody, it's individually the same as the timing is tough. You know what I mean? Especially when you're like trying to plant and fall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's some of the timing because not everything is the same time. So that's really important. Yeah. And that's where the stuff like the pictures and whatnot really comes in. Because you can see like, hey, this did really good. When did I plant this in the mm-hmm, ground? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for that bit, it basically comes down to having a actual planting schedule so i remembered i'd already looked back and remembered that i started some things indoors around mid-june excuse me mid-july and that year things were super small when i transplanted them out almost eight weeks later so just to clarify people say things like oh four weeks i've never had anything that was big enough to really transplant out after four weeks but 
almost yeah. eight weeks later, so more closer to mid September, and did really, really well. This year, I started some things indoors mid July, and I mean, re sewing and re sewing and re sewing, you know, and so things just didn't germinate. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm still sowing seeds and now we're in mid August, you know, still sowing seeds. Now we're at the beginning of September. And so that timing is uber important because that's a solid month that I was behind and I don't have that time to give. But it's OK for me for fall because I'm honestly I'm going to have less to work with in the garden which means I'll have more time to focus on getting the garden wrapped up, getting ready to put it to bed, right? Um, you know, spending time actually planning out, writing out what my schedule is going to be like for spring, you know, what it's going to be like for summer, what it's going to be like for next fall. So I'm going to make the most out of, you know, this extra time I'm going to clearly have on my hands because so little germinated. Yeah, and I mean, for me, it's like, carrot planting fall carrot planting season's coming up but as we know if you listen to the you should grow carrot series mm-hmm. um which should be available on youtube as well is um it's they don't like to germinate when it's hot mm-hmm. so you've got to wait and for me it's like there's a, a a finite time period where i can really get them in the ground and get going and then I've got to keep them cool. So, you know, those kinds of things right there, it's it's invaluable information because you can Google it all day long. You can listen to this podcast all day long. But somebody that lives... <clears throat> so, when I lived up in, in um, Massachusetts, I lived on the coast. And we, would, we had this motorcycle ride called the Gauntlet. Mm-hmm. And we would ride the Gauntlet. And it went all the way in, you know, 30, 40 miles in... Uh, west into the state it would literally be 40 degrees when we'd leave my house to be 65 degrees when we would just go 40 miles west so just that little bit of time that's a big difference you know what i mean yeah that's a really big planting difference for some of these plants so like knowing those aspects you know can make a make or break you moving forward the best experience the best way to learn is going to be based on what you've done in your garden. Um, So I've had some people that are local to me that are in Chicago have asked about my carrots recently. And I've been trying to grow carrots for like, I don't know, like five years. And like when I finally hit, I got one single carrot. Then the next year I got like a little small container of carrots, you know, then last year I got more carrots, like growing them in, you know, different spaces. This year I'm like, all right, right. Like I have enough to do the things that I at this point have had planned in previous years to do with carrots. Um, And I know what to do if I want more, if I want to get more carrots out of my garden. But it's very clear to me that and I'm not doing like a real trial study like every 15 days I'm planting so I know this doesn't work planting in the summer and planting um in the summer for fall carrots isn't a sweet spot for me right you know um the best I've had with carrots in my area I'm in zone 6a that only speaks to how cold it's going to get but it's relevant because my carrots it, the ground is going to be frozen before they really get to a point of like any real size. Right. Um, I'm in Chicago, Illinois and sowing those seeds in April for me has been the best kind of carrot harvest that I've seen. Sowing those seeds outdoors in April and my carrots for the most part of can survive throughout the hotter months, but they need that first probably I'm going to say anywhere from like 30 to maybe 30 plus days of really cool weather, cool and damp, you know. So, yeah, that's that's the thing. And so my lesson here is we talk about kind of fall. I'm not going to include fall carrots in 2023's, you know, fall garden. Yeah. You know. And see, for me, it's like I'm thinking about, you know, okay, now it's getting ready time to plant these things, get out there. And then I'm looking forward. I'm like, hold up. There's a hurricane that mm-hmm. we could possibly be getting next week, maybe. Mm-hmm. We're watching the forecast pretty close. So if that's being said, like if I put my carrot seeds out now, they just get buried when mm-hmm. they get rained on. So that would not do me any good. You know what I mean? So that's all part of, you know, I know that from experience. Yeah. <clears throat> but if we go to where like getting more out of the garden, so like the things that produce more for you, 
and meet, let's tick mark some of those boxes now. What do you think you would plant again that's worked really well for you in the past for fall? Kale is probably at the okay. top of the list. That's really the, that beats out collards. Well, I'm or do not, we just not need to mention collards? Well, I mean, I kind of feel like everyone's already assumed that. Like, is that already in your mm. scorecard? No, I only say kale because I have experienced transplanting kale in the garden in your August September period and it doing well for fall. I don't have experience. I have fall transplants for collards this year, but we haven't got there mm-hmm. yet to see how they're going to do. Right. My collards obviously have done wonderfully as we hit fall, but these were planted like back in the summer or spring, you know, so I'm not counting that right. so much. Um, so kale is probably at the top of the list for me. Um, and I've mentioned lettuce already. Yeah. So for me, I mean, you know, I've been leaning in heavy to it for um, years, but turnips and, mm-hmm. you know, radishes, obviously. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of another one that just in the winter really works well for me. So uh, we've talked about it earlier in the year, but uh, my winter plantings of broccoli work better than my spring mm-hmm. plantings. Mm-hmm. So um, I'll always, I think I will always try to plant in the spring for those, but I'll just have to plant earlier and earlier. So there is that, but they always just seem to work better for me. I always get a better harvest, you know, things just work out. So that's something that, you know, moving forward, I can, I can narrow down though, because I know that like in the fall I I should plant heavy and which I did, I have a whole bed full of broccoli and um, cauliflower starts that I did this year. But in the spring, I know that like, Hey, I should just do like a small planting you know, and then I can come behind it and maybe put some squash behind it or something like that in case something happens. Once it starts to bolt, just get it out of there. It's not, you know, nothing good's going to come out of that situation. Yeah, that's really critical, though, when you talk about the timing, because this is this year has been the best year for those spring brassicas for me or those cool weather crops, your broccolis, your cauliflowers. Um yeah, I'm going to call broccolis and cauliflowers. And so based on when I planted them, I only had like two reference points to how long it takes for them to get to maturity, which, you know, I mean, clearly right. weather impacts that. So if I plant them in April, they get they were mature and, you know, maybe even bolting, you know, by the time I get to early June, if I plant them closer right. to May. I'm able to get to a point where, okay, they're maturing this year as an example. And it was closer to, um, you know, closer to July, probably mid June, July ish, which again, that's pretty hot. Right. Um, And so that I look and say, when I think about fall, do I want to try fall for those plants? Because I really haven't. I mean, I've tried, but it's been a failure. (laughs) Or do I want to stick with get these things planted, enjoy them in the spring and, and move on to something else if we look at fall, right? Like they may not make the list for next year because there's also this bit of, in your words, removing friction. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in putting all that time into something and then turning around and not being able to do it. And a lot of my um, plantings that I did before, they all came down to... Um, to me, you know, following the seed packets, mm-hmm. the you know, the little maps mm-hmm. or Google searches and stuff like that. And so I would plant very heavy, but at the wrong times, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, my bulk of my gardening, you know, well, now not the bulk, but at, at first, you know, my personal own gardening knowledge came from zone six. So I would continue to plant that way in zone eight a where I am now. And it just didn't work out well. Like I had to completely flip the script and plant things way earlier than I ever thought I would be planting. I mean, last year when I started my tomato seeds, I was putting out seedlings in my garden in February. Mm -hmm. And that's like unheard of, Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. what I mean, in my mind. But it was natural. Was that this year or last year you had February seedlings? This year. I was putting um, cabbage and broccoli in. Okay. So, and I'll do that again this year, you know, and I may even move on to Brussels sprouts. I might might try that, but, and it depends, you know, looking at the weather and stuff like that, all, you know, all that kind of stuff makes a difference. 
Okay, do you want to move from fall, although we've intermixed spring? You want to intermix spring into it? Well, I think we did. I think that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. I mean, it's, a, it's the same thing. Well, that's the thing. That's actually the, the um, I think really it's <clears> fall, <throat> then summer, though, if we go by order. But it, so I think for me, it, it was very easy to look and say, you could repeat what you grew in spring for fall if you want. Right. And I'm sure that there are people that are successful in the things that I planted in the spring and then also planting them in the fall. And there probably are people that are successful in the growing areas that are similar to mine, you know, that are close to mine. But it ain't been me. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and, and maybe it, I'm, I'm it's my great hope that I'll live to test this out another day. But in this chair right now, reserving my right to change my mind, um, I am skinnying down my list of what's growing in spring and what's growing in fall. And it's it very much falls in line with reflecting on my experience and what I know has worked. Right. You know, so it's concentrating and focusing on that. Right. You know, getting that time right, knowing that if I start something in, you know, let's say June 1st and it isn't at a certain growth point by June 20th, then I need to come back around. Right. You know, because that my window is kind of this wide. And I also think that, you know, you and I firmly believe you won't know until you try kind of the what do you have to lose kind of attitude, but time, patience, you know, <laughs> energy. Um, and there's always as long as there's a growing season that's active or quickly approaching, there's always something I could be spending that time and energy on instead of chasing some plant. Um, and then I also I like the idea of there are. <laughs> The part that stuck with me when you had your kind of fall going into winter and you guys had turnips, I think it was, and you all had ate so many turnips and you were like going into the next spring, you are going to plant less turnips. And I'm very conscious of that. Right. You know, so thinking about if you flip it, spring to fall seems like a long time. But fall to spring isn't that long. right? You know, so if I have some success with things in the the fall there are gonna be some things that i just don't need to repeat in the spring you know um you and i talked about kale as a good example and how i'm like oh i can grow kale all through the summer i don't know if i want to do that i told you this before on this show i don't know if i want to do that like it hurts my get heart tired of eating it because hmm? you get tired of eating it no it hurts my heart to think about pulling the plant but um the weather will sustain my kale plants they don't die they sit dormant but they are a trap crop basically right they get nasty you know once we get to a certain part of the summer and my leafy greens like that are much healthier um you know less bug infestation in the early spring as well as if i'm planting them starting in late summer you know, and then they're going through, you know, most of fall. And so maybe I focus that space on something else in those like June, July months, you know, yeah. June, July and, a, and basically a bit of August. That's like three months I could be growing something else. I haven't figured out what that something else is. I could be letting that soil rest. I don't know. Um, so I'm not committing to it, but it definitely does put me in the mindset of like having something live in your garden space just because it can Listen now, I felt it. I, did you feel it? Did you feel the mo- the room move a little bit? I felt it move just a little bit, yeah. but I think the earth's still moving at the same rotation speed. Oh, uh-huh. Having something grow in your <laughs> garden just because it can doesn't make for the best garden. Yeah, you know, it's like I left some I left some chard out this summer because my theory was like, hey, I can harvest chard all summer, mm-hmm. and I left it in a um the sunniest part of my garden and it just turned into basically a tree Mm -hmm. and so it's like okay and i remember last year i mean it was growing in like dense shade so i know i was like okay well moving forward like if i'm going to do this again i need to put it in the shadiest part of my garden moving forward and that kind of helped me to narrow down because it's like you said you're narrowing down what you're going to plant so you're going to cause less friction 
you're going once you narrow down that list more you're going to start knowing how those plants grow Mm -hmm. and what they do and how they react to your garden when you can harvest them how long to get to a harvest what the best time to harvest is how long they can go into the cold or how long they can go into the heat if you're doing it in the spring and there is a lot of overlap in between fall and spring gardens but there's not it's not the same thing you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like it's just not the same thing because you're fighting the opposite fight you're fighting in fall the cold coming and then in the spring you're fighting the heat coming And that's really important to realize is like there's two different battles going on in the same space. And we need to meet that and find that, you know, find that happy medium. And a lot of times, you know, I just did a poll on um, the YouTube channel and every single person grew spring, summer and fall. Every person that answered. And so that was enlightening to me because a lot of people are feeling that pain right now of the heat coming and going and they're they are all learning in their own specific gardens like this is which way we go this is when we can plant this it's like (coughs) excuse me i have two different types of radish seeds i have one radish which was a uh it's a chinese red meat mat radish maddish what am i talking about And it says um, on the packet that it's able to germinate in higher heat, not high heat, but higher heat. So I start planting with those. And then as the season progresses and gets cooler, then I will go back with my regular champions or French breakfast radishes and plant those because they are naturally the cooler weather radish to grow. And then I'll do the opposite in the spring. So that's me learning over time that yes, there is a difference and there's a different time to plant certain things and certain varieties even can go different, you know, and it's like the Chinese red meat, mat, red meat radishes. Damn, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> they will, um, they actually grow bigger. So that's something to think about as well. Yeah. The one part that I want to make sure we fold in and maybe I, I don't, I don't want to assume that it's assumed. Um, I went lighter with radishes. And so when it comes to for the fall, when it comes to what I'm what I still have in the garden, what I am growing for fall, um, there's still only a couple of ways I'm going to eat radishes. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't overwhelm my garden or myself with a bunch of radishes. I had a lot of radishes last year um, and I didn't get through all of them, you know, and so. Um, I know that they're going to be, no matter what happens, other things that I'm going to be able to come out of my, that's going to be to come, come out of my garden that I've already preserved that I'll be able to enjoy. And so the part that I want to make sure that, you know, we just don't assume is assumed is this still has to do with the things you enjoy. So we want to get more out of, more out of our gardens, but more of the things that we enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't enjoy radishes until I learned how to cook them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that was a game changer for me. And that's when I really leaned into them. And when the rest of the family showed interest in it, then that helped even more. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, cabbages and stuff like that. Those are like, like I, I am like you where I am more importantly narrowing down my list of what I will and won't grow. And I always dabble in a couple extra things. But luckily, this time of year, things don't take up a lot of space. So there's always that, you know, there's that, that. Yeah, but but the soil has been beat up, you know, a bit too, right? So a lot of the things that we're planting, the spaces we're planting in, it's put in some work already, you know, because we are at the end of what would be the third season since the real, whatever real break that our garden beds and our garden spaces have had. Yeah, and that's why I compost as heavily and as hard as I do, Mm -hmm. which I finally... Got my compost, uh, my newer pile to start heating up. Mm -hmm. So um, I flipped it yesterday and it was, I mean, it was hot outside, but I stuck my hand by, I don't stick my hand in it because it's got a lot of chicken poo in it. I don't (laughs) stick my hand in it until it's composted, Mm -hmm. but um, I could feel the heat starting. So I was like, okay, we're, we're finally getting somewhere because this is the big, just like you said, that, that is something that's not really related to planting, but something that I've had to relive where like for me. I have to add compost two to three times a year to my garden 
to some manner. And I'm going to have to either produce more or I'm going to have to buy more. It's one of the two. But I have to produce it and put it into my garden because it's so heavily used. And I mean, I garden four seasons, basically. There is a part of winter where things are dormant, but there's still plants actively in it mm-hmm. doing something. So I do have to, you know, add and fertilize and do stuff like that where somebody like yourself, who you get to take a whole season off, it doesn't, you know, it's not as hard on the garden. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's that. There's that, that. And then you can you can fold in stuff like, um, you know, different times that you've used like row covers and low tunnels and stuff like that and see if that's how like I did a low tunnel last year and I, I got mediocre results. I wasn't I spent more time with it last year off than on. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good idea for me to do it. It's just I need to reevaluate the scenario you know what i mean like maybe i can put it up later maybe i just save it for emergencies something i don't i don't really know the correct answer for it but there is an answer so when i think about the fall and when i said oh there's some things that didn't germinate and that didn't um you know, take it's going to leave more room for me to, you know, and more time for me to, to work on other things. I still have, you know, um, kind of uh, low tunnels I need to erect, you know, for the fall going into winter, right? It's a very technical way to say I it. I know, I know. Um, I still have. I'm proud of you. I haven't started to collect any of my leaves. We haven't, I mean, the, the trees are still, you know, green. It won't be long, but that's a whole thing for me, you know. Yeah. Um, I haven't. I don't have a bed that's empty enough to have topped it off with compost, like to put it to bed yet. Like it's still early in the season for me. But those are things that that are a part of kind of the end of year garden chores for me. Um, And it's all a part of the this idea of like, oh, it's not really planting. It's not really harvesting, you know, but it's needed to get to that point of planting and harvesting. Right. I am excited to add leaves to my compost pile <laughs> just so because you know, it just adds a lot of bulk you know what i mean like so how many i know you've been composting for a long time but how long do you feel like it's been that you've been chasing kind of this elevated compost quantity or quality i've been chasing it for about two years now and honestly the only reason why i haven't met it is because i don't want to make a third bin i'm like stuck on doing two bin system uh-huh. um and that and between trying to revitalize bad soil yeah. and stuff like that that I've been dealing with, that eats a lot into it. But um, we have like coming into this time of year, we have certain things that we do to boost it. You know, we add leaves. We collect the pumpkins from the people in our neighborhood. We put those in and that's a big boost right there. Mm-hmm. Um, the chicken coop always is a big um, is a big producer of it. Actually, without the chicken coop, we, we couldn't do it. Um, but, you know, this time of year is really that time where we really boost it. Between the pumpkins, the chickens, and the leaves, it's like you really get a jump start and we'll make the bulk of it. And then I go out um, in the middle of winter, usually around Christmas time, I go out and I do what, norm- what normally is the unthinkable and I spread... Um, fresh chicken poop out in my garden for the winter and let it age in the garden Mm -hmm. in the winter. And then I put compost over it. And then that, when I did that before, man, it was like fire come spring. It just, it worked out really well. So, I mean, those are all part of this too. You know, without that aspect, I couldn't do what I do. And so so that's just part of the learning process. If you have it already, go to Backyard Gardens TV on and or on YouTube, and just search on the channel for chickens. And there are a number of chicken videos that Young Ben <laughs> has put together. And as of this recording, one of the more recent ones is absolutely going to pull at your heartstrings. It's kind of like a boy and his chickens. <laughs> so, uh, check that out. I've watched it multiple times. It's it's uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a sad thing. story in there, but it's it's a triumphant sad story. He gives you the warning so just in case you want to fast forward. But uh, 
Yeah, it's one of our beloved chickens. It was uh, something that occurred. But um, no, it's, you know, I'm a big proponent. And I, I honestly, after having chickens now for 10 years, I believe every buddy should have chickens to some extent just a couple i think it would um it just it helps a lot and that's where we were talking last time about um not community garden but having a community and if you had somebody that was willing to do it to be able to share the manure and stuff like that and the compost uh, my neighbor across the street she gardens and she has chickens she bags up her manure and throws it away she doesn't even compost it, which is, you know, I find it tragic because she gets a lot. And I've, I've thought about going over there and getting it from her, but I, I don't. I just mm-hmm. prefer to do my stuff because I want to see how much I can produce. There is but, a bit um, about, you know, what you feed your chickens to. Yeah, I know what she feeds her okay. chickens, though. Yeah, I know what she feeds her chickens. But um, there's a, there's a point in the show where we digress and we've hit that point. So, you know what that means? It's time. For the recipe of the day. All right. So one or two episodes ago, young Ben asked for you all to comment in all the places and provide some of your favorite recipes. And, um, That episode hasn't aired as of this recording, so I'm not going to blame you all. (laughs) However, because I am in desperate need for your suggestions for recipes, this is what you're going to get today. So it's spicy radish slaw. It's not even a side. It's not a full recipe. It's not a side. This is a condiment. But damn it, we talked about radishes. I have these ingredients. So we're going to do, and this, I mean, the spicy radish slaw was really for tacos, so... I mean, make your tacos as you see fit. So real quick ingredients. One cup of sliced radishes. I may need to sow more seeds. 10 to 12 mint leaves, thinly sliced. One lime, the juice of one lime. Tablespoon of olive oil. uh, One sugar rush hot pepper or any other chili that you prefer. I have the sugar rush hot pepper. Can you believe that? Then you're going to salt and pepper your taste. So all you're going to do is thinly slice the radishes, put them in a bowl of ice water for 30 minutes. It says it's going to help mellow the radishes out. Perhaps not, you know, take a little bit of the zing, the spice out of it, maybe. Uh, Drain the radishes and add the remaining ingredients, toss and combine, and then put them on your favorite tacos. That's it. That's all. The site, we don't know this person, but I'm going to give a shout out to twoheartsnutrition.com. She actually has, she or he actually also has a mushroom taco, which I'm going to try recipe. And nope, I'm not giving you that. And we're also going to start putting the um, recipes on Patreon if we can remember. So there'll be a post on And if it's actually a recipe that's written somewhere already versus some, some of these, we just, it's what we've come up with on our own. And so, yeah. And if I have them written down, I'll, I'll take a picture and post it of the uh, card or whatever. But, um, (laughs) (laughs) this isn't the episode. We're not recording this one. So what I mouthed to him was, I ain't, you know, (laughs) I got leaves to collect. I got like soil tests to figure out how to get done. Got to come up with a whole new plan for my tomatoes next year. A repurposing of the cage, baby. I just can't. I can't. (laughs) Are you are you doing um, a soil test? I've um I'm in year one of the <laughs> thinking about the soil test. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get it done. All right. At this point, I don't want to get into next year and realize oh I could have, you know I could have yeah. made. Are you gonna do it with your state? Or are you gonna do like a company? Well, don't say the company if you are. Well, actually, it's both. So my state okay. Illinois doesn't support um soil testing they actually have recommended facilities so recommended companies okay. it's still pretty reasonably priced like 10 or 12 bucks plus you know shipping or whatever yeah so it's not like you know well not worth gonna it. break the bank yep and so i do need to correct myself um this is the conclusion of the expand of you can get more out of your garden series there's going to be um the after show on patreon that we're going to record um so there's that and I want to say I'm going to go ahead and announce the next series because I think we have it in stone, right? No, we don't have it down, but this is his way of like pinning me down. Go ahead. Announce it. 
<laughs> I think this is one of my ideas too. It's like, go ahead. This is going to be a hard one though. It is. We. <laughs> So, um, starting next week, we are going to start comparing the gardens from um, the past, meaning like ancient times back in the day, to now and start exploring that. Uh, we just have a broad topic here. We've got to figure out the episodes, but um, I'm super excited about it because you know that my gardening style, I try to keep it real as far as like old school goes. Mm-hmm. So, I'm interested to see if maybe I'm not doing that. You know, I know there's some things I'm just like, I'm not going to do. But I'm interested, so we'll see how that turns out. But it should be a good discussion, don't you think? Yeah, I think it fits right in with where we're ending here because I am a firm believer in there are things that we can look back on the past and like, again, we, there are a lot of things that were done in, in our parents' years and our grandparents' years and so on, you know, and beyond that, that we realize ain't the way, right? You know, mm-hmm. like, um, you know, smoking while pregnant, you know, that was a thing, right? Um, but there are things that we know from the past were effective and they still are. And I, I want to try to brush off some of this whole new, you know, new generation needs to be a new way, some yeah. of that just ain't ain't what we need to be spending our time on. So I really want to want to see if we can dig in and figure out what are the best of the best that we can take for from the ancients. The ancients. That's like that's my term for the past. So um, I did a video called "Drawing Food Like the Ancients," <laughs> and it was just old school. You know what I mean? Like simple, basic, mm-hmm. old school. Um, I, you know what I have to say about all of that? No. You have tires on your car. I do. The wheels on your car. They work pretty good. Don't try to reinvent them. I don't. I mean, so, do I? Am I that corny when I feel like I'm being clever or is it? Oh, I was trying to be corny. I wasn't trying to be clever. Okay, all right. Good, good, good. <laughs> I'm not clever. I'm corny. Okay, yeah. Look, I'm a dad. I'm allowed to be that way. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. So, um, look, everybody. Please help support us. Check us out on Patreon. Check us out on all the different places. Um, As of right now, the YouTube, um, we have a new YouTube channel for the podcast only. Batavia and I have been itching for a while to have a place for us to be together. So the shorter episodes are going on there. We are um, currently releasing all of the backlog and then we will very quickly get into the newer episodes so please check us out on backyard gardens podcast um you can check me out on backyard gardens tv batavia on be better gardens um just check us out please help support the show and just by watching those you're supporting us and subscribing so that's that's free um but we're really excited because it's something that we've wanted to do for a long time and you know as you all know we are at a distance from each other and it's hard to create something in which we are together, Mm -hmm. but we wanted a place where you went and you came and you knew that this was our space. So that's where it's going to be. Batavia and I are going to be there forever together. That's a great place for you to drop some recipe uh, recipes in the comments too. Cause otherwise I could come up with like a dozen types of slaw. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure every other week you don't want to get that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and you know, we we did uh for a period we attempted to uh put on video just the recipes, but we quickly backed off of that. It just got to be a pain. Yeah. So, um if there's a lot of interest, a lot of interest, then we can do that. But um you guys got to show up in order for us to have that. But check us out, um help support the show and relive the past in a good way. Don't be bringing up old shit. Don't nobody want to hear that. <laughs> But until next time, try those mushroom tacos with that spicy radish slaw. Oh, and see ya. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya.
If you guys want some backyard gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck. We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.